It's Christmas morning, and here I am cleaning the whole building as punishment. Not that I can complain. Marie wanted to let me off with a warning, but that just didn't sit right with me. I really thought I'd gotten better with my magic. I can't believe I actually blinded people. Maybe I made a mistake when I chose light magic? No, this was a bad experience, but I still like the light. <clears throat> huh, this is kind of like a... Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait for it. Ah, there it is. <laughs> I love this song. Are you sure this is what you want to do, Sophia? I nod. I won't feel right till I can make up for what I did. Everyone makes mistakes starting out, you know. You shouldn't punish yourself so much for it. Yeah, but, like, that would have been really bad. It's just give and take, really. If nothing else, then I'll feel better if you let me do this. All right, I won't argue with you if you're set on it. Just speak up if you need help, all right? You got it. Marie leaves the lab and I get to work. The dust gets to me as soon as I go into the storage room. You know, I'm glad I volunteered to clean. Mistake or no, this... You know, I'm glad I volunteered to clean. Yeah, that's a better take. <laughs> Mistake or no, this place is a mess. I wonder if they'd ever clean it if I hadn't offered. That's a good question. I dust and mop the whole place from top to bottom. A couple hours later, I'm finally done cleaning, but the blind griffin's about to open. I didn't get to my I didn't get to take my usual nap. Hope I can stay awake while I'm on the job tonight, and no more light shows. I stumble into the bar, but it's not as busy looking as it usually is around this time. Hmm. Good evening. How did you, how did cleaning go? All right. Took me a lot longer than I thought it would. Well, rest easy. The Griffins closed for Christmas. Oh, okay. We're having a company party, you might say. Everyone should be coming around shortly. I know Christmas is a holiday, but... Oh no. Everyone starts coming in holding a bunch of wrapped gifts. That's right. Christmas is when you give people presents. Marie, I didn't... Oh, we didn't get anybody anything. Oh no. Here you go, Sophia. Hope you like it. Vivi comes up to me and hands over a package before I can finish talking. Th thanks she smiles and walks off. Marie puts her hand on my shoulder. Don't worry about it, Sophia. I eventually get presents from everyone. Well, almost everyone. Uh oh. <sighs> Giovanni is off by himself for talking to Al Alexei for the whole dinner. I guess he's still mad at me for what happened yesterday. But once everyone's leaving, he stops me. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, sure. You two take your time. I'll make sure the place is locked up. Thanks, Marie. Giovanni gestures toward the bar, and I sit at the counter. He steps behind it. Fancy a drink? Hmm, I'll take a south side. Feeling classy to- oh, feeling classy tonight, huh? I shrug. I like lime. It's been a while since Giovanni's mixed a drink around here. I watch him work. There's a... a sort of art to the way he mixes drinks. I can mix drinks alright, but he makes it look so smooth. Here's your south side. Thanks. He mixes himself a drink too, and then comes and sits next to me. Neither of us says anything for a while. Look, I'm sorry for last night. No, it was my fault for being stupid. Giovanni shakes his head. That's not what I meant. I mean, you made a mistake, sure. But you're new to all this. You're bound to make mistakes. I shouldn't have snapped at you like that. It's just... What is it? I had another magician friend once, you know. He was real powerful, like you. But he had too much magical ability for his own good and he couldn't control it well. He hurt the person who was most important to him in an accident one day. If they'd been a second slower in getting help, that person could have died. Over time, my friend lost control more and more, 
He was so terrified of hurting people again and tried to keep all this inside. In the end, he died miserable and alone. Since I started training to be a magician, I only saw the fun parts of it. I mean, practicing can be boring, but come on, magic is cool. I'm only now seeing that there's bad parts to it, too. I'm sorry about your friend. It's alright. Sometimes I think the big sleep might not be half bad. Well, I'm guessing we can, we can guess what that means. Big sleep. Noun. Death. Also a pretty great movie from the 1940s starring Humphrey Bogart with a screenplay penned by William Faulkner. Huh. How can you say that? It's like going to sleep forever, right? That doesn't sound so terrible. I'm not sure about that. Sophia. Hmm? What do you think magic should be used for? Uh... I never really thought about that before. I would I wouldn't say for yourself. I don't know. I don't really know. Right now I've got my hands full just studying hard enough to pass the exam so I can keep on using it. <laughs> my thinking my thinking is a little different from most people's, I guess. But I think magic should be used to help others. I don't know why we're magicians. Whether this magic's god-given or just random happenstance, we're a part of a small group of people with a great power. As people, so as people with this great privilege. We also have a great responsibility to the world and making sure that it's a good place. Do you get what I'm saying? I slowly nod. I see what he's trying to say, and I think it's good to help people too. But did God or whoever give us this power just so we could sacrifice ourselves to help other people? I don't think that's right. We're magicians, not martyrs. Yeah, that's true too. Oh, I almost forgot. I've got a present for you. He hands me a neatly wrapped package. Ah! Ah! Thanks, but I didn't get anything for you. I didn't get anything for anyone. I had no idea we were having a party tonight. It's alright. For me, the best present would be you passing your exam. Okay, let's make sure we do that. You sure are generous. <laughs> you think so? I think I'm a pretty petty man. After chatting for a little while, we go our separate ways. I don't know why, but even though we cleared things up and he's not mad at me anymore, I feel like something's off. Ooh. Oh no, that took so much longer than I thought it would. Marie told me there'd be a special New Year party at the Blind Griffin tonight. I went to the hairdressers and... Well, I suppose I dig my new hairdo, but boy, if it ain't gonna take a lot of getting used to. Uh -oh, what does it look like? Show us what it looks like. I make my way back, unlock the front door, and then go down to the research room. Oh, Vivian and Marie are both fixing themselves up for the party. They both look so fancy. Welcome back. Welcome back, Sophia. How'd it go? I slowly take off my hat. Uh-oh. What does it look like? Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Is it that bad? Not at all, sweetheart. It's the bee's knees. You look like a genuine flapper. Oh, hey. I know that one. Noun. A hip young woman during the 1920s, often with bobbed hair and short skirts. Yep. I didn't know what to ask for, so I left it to the hairdresser. This is so short, though. You really think it's all right? Absolutely. It looks real nifty on you. Gee, thanks, Vivi. I got this for you, so go on and change into this. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I take the package in Marie's hand and run off to the, ro the, the rush room. To the washroom. By the time I get back, the two of them are all ready to go. Oh, dang. She's looking fancy. How do I look? Wow, Sophia, that dress is the berries. You look great too, Viv. Anne Marie. Anne Marie, but you always look sharp. That she does. 
<laughs> You've gotten so good at flattery. I only speak the truth, you know that. Speaking of looking sharp, do you think you could take the boys these ties? They're all next door in the lab. Ties, eh? I suppose I could. I take the ties from Marie's outstretched hand and make my way across the hall. Wonder what the guys are doing in the lab anyhow. I open the door without hesitation and walk in. Do you have a death wish, Bearcat? Dios mio, get out! Uh, <laughs> uh, we're not ready yet, doll. Uh oh, Recipe. Oh, I'm sorry. So I say, but I can't tear my eyes away. <laughs> Alex is getting redder and redder as he turns away. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know Russian. I've been seen. Exposed. <laughs> Alex, calm down. Oh my god, this really... Oh my god, this really is like... Like, uh... uh he's Ignis. <laughs> he might be a mix of Noct and Prompto. And he's definitely a uh, Gladio. Jesus Christ. You do not understand, Gio. I wanted my future wife to be the only woman to see my body in this way. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Dry up already! <laughs> that was good. I back out through the door and shut it quickly. I can hear crying coming from the other side of the door. Come on, Alex, it's not the end of the world. I've, I've been exposed. It's all over. Why don't you just marry that bear cat then? That'll solve the problem. The crying gets louder. Oh, that's harsh. Oh, I forgot to give them the ties. <laughs> when I hear someone snickering behind me, I turn around, but there's nobody there. I was definitely set up, wasn't I? Later, I'm downstairs at the speakeasy, getting everything ready for the party. You little devil. Well, I shouldn't say little. She's very tall. Working hard, Sophia. Yep, almost have everything together. Good, good. By the way, do you know about the New Year tradition? Tradition? They say that the first person you encounter in the New Year sets the tone for the rest of the year. So you should find the person you want to be with the most right... Right at, right at midnight. Really? Maybe Giovanni, eh? <laughs> Wink! Well, maybe that means... Oh. Oh, God, the song. Well, maybe then that means I'll learn more about magic from them this year. That's not quite what I meant, but I suppose it'll do. Don't forget, all right? If you say so, Marie. The party gets into full swing not long after that. Hey. This place is so lively tonight. Would you like your usual whiskey, Mr. Yamana? I'll have rum tonight. Rosemary will have the sherry and gin. Don't order for me, Hajime. Dear, how do you know what I want? You always order the same thing. I might want something different this time. All right, then what are you having? Sherry and gin. <laughs> you see? <laughs> it just so happens that I want to drink sherry and gin tonight. I might order something different next time, so don't you dare speak over me, Hajime. Arf, arf! Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Even Arrow thinks you're being unreasonable. Nonsense, Arrow is a gentleman. I'm sure he hates being talked over, too. <laughs> arf! See? That dog. Here's your rum, Mr. Yamada, and your sherry and gin, Mrs. Grierson. Thank you so much, dear. You agree with me, don't you? I might order another drink next time. Whatever you say. <laughs> of course, Mrs. Grierson. When it's almost midnight, the bar closes and everyone gets ready for the countdown. Remembering what Marie said before, I try to find Giovanni. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. He's not hard to find. I'll fill up two glasses with water. I remember to squeeze some lemon juice into one of them. 
after he and Vivi finishes the song, I walk up to the stage. Here you go. <laughs> hey. Oh, thanks, Sophia. You can even put lemon juice in it. This will do wonders for my vocal cords. Grazie, Sophia. They sip their water gratefully. The crowd's really hopping tonight. Of course, I wouldn't expect any less given Vivi's skill. Ah, uh. oh, you flatter me. You should share at least half the compliments, too, you know. It wouldn't be as great a performance without you. No, no, the honor is all yours, Vivi. Oh, it's almost midnight. I'm going to the washroom. She leaves Giovanni and me alone. Uh-oh. How's it going at the bar? Busy as always, but since it's almost time for the countdown, Marie gave me a break. She told me the first person you encounter in the new year sets the tone for the rest of the year. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> so you want me to be the first person you encounter? Yep. Why? Huh? I mean, I'm flattered, but do you really want an old man like me setting the tone for the rest of your year? How old are you? <laughs> That's it. 25? You're not an old man to me. I'm already 22, you know. Right. Wait, Cicero? No matter how old I look at you, you don't look any older than 15 or 16. Emilio and Vivi said the same thing. Hey, you served me alcohol the other day. You did that even though you thought I was 16. I I thought I'd just give you a taste of the adult life or something. Plus, I watered it down. He stares at me for a little while before bursting out laughing. I see, I'm sorry. I thought you were a little mature beyond your years. I see. So, you're 22. Just then, everyone starts cheering behind us. <laughs> Happy New Year, Giovanni. Just Geo's fine, you know. Everyone else calls me that. I nod slowly. Oh no, I miss midnight. <laughs> Poor Vivi. Vivi hops up onto the stage. Well now, how about a dance? I'll sing something slow for everyone. Need me to accompany you? I can handle this one a, a cappella. You two dance. Oh, I don't dance. Come on, doll, I'll lead. He holds his hand out to me. It takes me only half a heartbeat to take it. Dang. Sorry if I step on your shoes, your toes, Gio. Hearing me use his nickname, he smiles and then leads me onto the dance floor to join everyone else. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As I dance with him to the sound of Vivi's voice, I can't help but feel like 1926 is going to be a great year. A couple days later, we're bleh. a couple days later, we're all relaxing at the speakeasy after a busy after another busy evening. Food and drinks are on me tonight. I called in some special catering. What's the occasion? No occasion. I just wanted to celebrate business getting better. So that's the occasion. <laughs> Don't you think this sort of thing is why we were bleh, why you all were operating the red in the first place? Ah, <laughs> oh, you've got to let me have my fun, sweetheart. Don't go sounding so much like Alex. I hear this pl I hear this talk plenty from him as it is. Would that actually follow? Would that you actually followed my advice? All right, all right, enough of that. This is supposed to be a fun little dinner party. She always looks so surprised. Oh, Sophia, there's only a few weeks left until your exam, right? How things have been going? I said fun. It's all right, Marie. I think magic's pretty fun. She beams when I say that. I, I'm i really sorry for what happened on Christmas Eve, but I've studied a lot more since then, and I think I've gotten better. The group stares at me, waiting for me to go on, but strangely, I don't feel a lot of pressure. I glance over at Giovanni for support, too. He smiles, encouraging me to keep talking. When you all first told me I was a magician, I didn't know what to think. But lately I think magic's really fun. I really like light magic. 
so I really want to pass my exam and keep going, with all of you. The field of light magic is pretty underdeveloped compared to the rest. You have a great chance here to contribute a lot of new things to the field and rediscover old ways. Yeah, I'm so excited for you, Sophia. Thank you. Everyone wishes me luck, and then we eat a, del a delicious dinner, which Marie refuses to tell us how much she paid for. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your patronage. I hand the customer a bag of candy, and they wave to me as they leave. The candy store is just a front for the speakeasy, but we do pretty well for ourselves. I'm just about to close up shop for the day when I hear yelling. What? What? Believe, waste, genius. If Ale if if Alex, a uh, bleh, that name really gets me. Alexi, Alexi. If Alexi's hollering at someone, I'll bet anything that Geo's involved. I lock the front door in a hurry and run downstairs. Alex, stop it! What's going on? I whisper to Vivi, who's watching from a distance. These two argue a lot, well, Alex he picks fights with Gio a lot, but I've never seen them actually come to blows. Gio was... You are telling me to stop. You, who have been enabling him all this time. Alex, you don't understand. How could I understand such a thing? Oh, God. Oh, man. Alex found Gio injecting himself with some kind of drug in the bathroom. I knew it. I knew it. He had some kind of problem. His hands all shaky. Injecting? You know, using needles. I remember hearing about the government outlawing heroin some years back, but I'd never paid much attention to that sort of thing. But now... Heroin? I don't know. There's a sort of crackling energy in the air I've never felt before. Like actual sparks, flying. Alexei looks like he's about to explode. Explain this to me. I must know. What are you doing with these drugs? Is it heroin? It's... it's not heroin. What is it, then? He looks at Marie, who shakes her head, but Gio keeps talking, rambling. Oh, dang. It's an inhibiting gene. It weakens my magic ability. I... I need it. You don't understand what it's like, Alex. I do not understand. Why would someone like you, a magical genius whose feet I can barely reach, need such a thing? Why did you not talk to me about it? Alex, I can't. I couldn't. You didn't know... You don't know what you're asking of me. If I don't have these drugs, I... Gio turns his head. I don't know why. Maybe he couldn't bear looking Alexi in the eye anymore. Maybe it was a random impulse. But our eyes meet. I watch his eyes widen, his face smooth in horror. And then, so fast that I almost miss it, the floor below opens him. The floor below him opens up. Gio! But the earth, but the earth swallows him up, and just like that, he's gone. What?